Hey, have you ever been betrayed in your relationship and never want to go through that again? In today's episode, we're going to talk to Dr. Carl Benzio, who's going to share with us particular character flaws and red flags to look out for when dating after betrayal. Join us for this episode. Please consider subscribing to our channel. Every week we put out a new video that could support you, support your marriage, and support your healing. Sex outside of the appropriate times, but it's amazing how many people marry somebody who is having sex with them at inappropriate times, but then assumes that that's gonna stop whenever they get together. That person um, needs to look at themselves first and really work on themselves. We want them to be a good, autonomous, independent, functioning person. Um, you know, as far as what are those characteristics or traits? You know, I guess as I treat people over the years, I sort of see that there's, um, for guys, there's sort of two types. There's the guy that is um, very me centered, uh, narcissistic. Um, callous, uh, not empathic, uh, not compassionate towards other people, just, you know, it's really about themselves. Um, they can sometimes look and be a chameleon and seem like they can be caring and loving, but, you know, they're, they're, their MO is always about them and how can I just be me-centered, get my needs met, however that is. Sometimes they're just bouncing from relationship to relationship. Sometimes they do get married for whatever various reasons that suit their needs, uh, but they don't last monogamously with that relationship because it's all about me. And, you know, how can, you know, they're very immediate focused on, um, on the short game of their satisfaction, not really a long game for what is, you know, what is, you know, a marriage is really about the long game. It's about establishing something and growing something that lasts for a long time that continues to get richer and richer and richer as the years and as the conflicts even go by because as you navigate a conflict together, you know, you start to trust each other more. You can open up with each other more. You can, you know, get deeper in transparency and, and, and collaboration. It's like, wow, that was a pretty big issue that we had. And we were able to work together as a team. I've never been able to work with somebody that, that deeply and that closely about something that prominent as that person. So even conflict really grows our relationship. Uh, but it's hard for people to see the, the depth of what a relationship can grow to right in the beginning. Sometimes you see that in your parents or, you know, a relationship of your mentors. Um, so there's a certain group of guys that, that just don't see a long game. They just see what immediate need, how do I get my immediate needs met, either with my spouse or with, you know, some random. Um, the other type of guy is the guy who's like almost the opposite. He's almost too self, uh, uh, I won't say selfless, but he um, is a people pleaser, doesn't have a lot of confidence, it feels inadequate, feels unsure of himself, um, but he wants power, wants control, or wants, not in a bad way, but just wants to feel like he has some control of his life. So, you know, cheating, um, having an affair is something that uh, he's, he has a hard time saying no to certain things that make advance uh, or to um, just want some control, wants some power, wants to define his life as opposed to being a people pleaser to maybe his spouse and she is more controlling of the situation and he needs some area of control um, or to have some uh, yeah. appeasement of, of that, that he calls the shots in a certain way. Now, uh, obviously I'm sort of stereotyping and drawing generalities, but sort of those would be sort of two types of guys. Uh, for women, you know, similarly you have uh, uh, one type of woman is one that has learned that uh, sex is a commodity or a currency that they use to gain power or gain control or to manipulate, to feel loved, to feel needed, to feel valued. Um, so they're uh, more um, uh, sort of like that narcissistic guy that's all about me. They've, you know, not really worrying about connection or not, you know, craving or, or understanding even what connection is. But, you know, sex is just a tool that they use for, you know, to get other needs met and for other gains. The other sort of bucket for women, you know, in my experience are those uh, ladies that are uh, dear, kind, um, compassionate, uh, want to give of themselves, you know, uh, want to be in a marriage, want to be in a, in a full marriage, 
uh, that's loving, that's caring, but they just don't feel valued. They don't feel loved. They don't feel respected. They don't feel accepted. Uh, they don't feel equal, you know, in the relationship. And so uh, because of that, you know, they either uh, migrate to that isolation, um, you know, overeating, uh, getting beat down, depression, loneliness, uh, world where they, you know, dig into their kids and they give up themselves with the kids. And then when the kids are gone, they're, you know, have trouble with depression, anxiety, suicidality, um, or they, instead of going inward, they sort of go outward. Okay. Well, where do I get these needs met? Where do I get some attention? They can find somebody at work or, you know, somebody in their social circles or whatever that appreciates their skills, their gifts, their compassion, their empathy, their sensitivity, uh, their kindness. And, uh, makes overtures and you know they they feel wanted they feel needed by that person and they feel respected and they start to develop a you know an intimate relationship whether it's just emotional or whether it becomes physical um those are sort of the the two buckets on the female side that you know i've seen classically in in my practice how do you recognize things um you know i would say that you know i always warn my girls i have three daughters that um you know you you want to see how people treat you when you're dating, you know, do they call you names? Do they belittle you? Um, do they swear at you? Do they hit you? Um, are they really attentive to your needs? Are they willing to sacrifice, you know, for your needs? If they weren't willing to sacrifice for your needs and they were pushing to have sex with you before you were married or when you were dating, to me that shows me that he values his needs way above your needs. Mm -hmm. You know, he values, yeah. you know, what, what, what makes him feel good way more than what makes you feel good in the process. To me, that's a pretty big red flag. So, Huge. you know, we, we don't want to have people, we don't want people to have sex outside of the appropriate times, but it's amazing how many people marry somebody who is having sex with them at inappropriate times, but then assumes that that's going to stop whenever they get together. But, you know, here's a red flag. This person doesn't understand sexual boundaries and doesn't, uh, you know, and it, it is using their needs to out-trump your needs uh, and say, hey, you're really important to me. I love you. I care for you. But yet, hey, I have this need, and I want to impose, and I want to push against you to help you do something unhealthy for me to get my needs met in this very um, uh, temporal, immediate kind of fashion that has no long-term benefit to us at all, but is even eroding. But I have this need right now. And so if they're that impulsive or that needy or um, – are saying, hey, my needs dramatically out trump your needs, that doesn't bode well for an ongoing marital relationship. You know, you want somebody who's willing to sacrifice for your needs and willing to put your needs above theirs uh, in a situation. You don't want people to be doormats or welcome mats um, and be just so passive in the process, but you want them to be assertive, but an understanding of what healthy needs are and how to value your healthy needs and how to be sacrificial, you know, at times, you know, for that, as well as being uh, empathetic compassionate to you and to the people around them so that hurting somebody would be a, a pretty significant um, wound to themselves that that's something that they don't take lightly you know hurting somebody whether hurting you in a marriage or having an affair with somebody who's also married or um, you know yeah those kind of things all right another warning sign for people is substance use so for me a lot of my inappropriate behavior relationally I was drinking a lot so if a person is using drugs, you know, even caffeine in heavy, you know, heavy amounts, but you know, certainly alcohol, smoking weed, whether medicinally or not, um, psychedelics, you know, are things that are starting to come into the, the treatment world a little bit for PTSD, for vets and stuff, um, you know, and certainly using opioids or any party drugs or those kind of things. Um, substances bring your emotions closer to the surface. It makes them more intense. So, you know, we talked about that emotional volume button. So substances certainly bring those emotions up uh, that lowers our thinking. Uh, substances interfere with our ability to see the situation accurately. And substances usually lead to a lot more impulsive behaviors, a lot more, you know, they distort our ability to see long-term and long-term consequences and delayed gratification. So it's all about now. It's all about the immediate, well, what's going to make me feel good now? What's the thrill now? What's the buzz now? Um, you know, what can I do to impress people that I'm trying to impress, my peers, you know, this hot chick that's over there in the corner or, you know, whatever. Um, we all have these sort of immediate kind of things that are pressing on us. And if a person 
you know, if you're dating somebody that substances are an important part of their, their functioning or their regular use, I'd dump that person and move on. Uh, another thing to add to that would be uh, excuses. If they are somebody that has a hard time yeah. taking ownership and taking accountability of when they do a wrong thing or saying they're sorry or, uh, you know, I, you know, I, yeah, I lied there or, well, I made that mistake or um, are they people that point fingers so they don't really accept responsibility. They're not really transparent with their own inner weaknesses or inner hurts um, where they have a lot of lame excuses, whether they, you know, they bought something at a store and they have a lame excuse when they go to return it. Well, boy, even though that's not with me right now, how do I know that they're not going to do that with me at times as well? So, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at not only how they treat you, but how are they treating the other people around them? And are they lying, bending the truth, lame excuses, avoiding accountability, avoiding responsibility? Those are things that are the red flags that, wow, in our relationship as it gets deeper and it gets more, uh, I don't want to say turbulent, but as, as it gets more complex, I don't want them to take these easy outs you know, in our relationship, like I see them taking in these much less stressful situations, but they seem to take an easy out there. Whenever the pressure's cranked up a bit more, what's the probability yeah. that they're going to take an easy out whenever it's even harder? Yeah. Probably pretty high. Uh, first, this as a foundation, I have to remember how much I've betrayed God and continue to betray God. That part of your repentance is bearing the pain of what you caused them. Hey, wait a minute. Before you click off this video, if you found value in this, would you click the like button for us? Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in next week's episode.